theme that was beginning to move on the spirit of fear, I, I took notes. You know, that's the way God speaks to us. I took notes. And I feel like I will add the word portion to the prophetic word, to the testimony, and to the worship so we can have a sure liberation of the spirit of fear. So if you allow me, I will be obedient to God leading and shift things around a little bit, and we're going to come back to the next time and let trickle down this thing and get to the root of it and remove it out of our life so we can fulfill the destinies that are so rich and so colorful that God has for us. So let's talk about the spirit of fear, how to handle it. I will start right away from the scriptures, of course. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Go through the King James for me. We're going to, yeah, we're going to keep in the King James. Yeah, thank you. If I will entitle this, I will call it No Fear. No Fear. Somebody say No Fear. No fear. Say it again. No. Everybody talk back to me. No fear. no fear. Say it as if you are not afraid. No fear. no fear. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Here are the three things God has given to you and I. It is power, love, and a sound mind. The Bible did not say God did not give us fear. It said God didn't give us the spirit of fear. In other words, when we talk about fear, you need to put spirit in front. Here is where we lose sight of really what fear is. We remove spirit. We just keep fear. So because we keep fear, we see fear only on a medical, emotional, psychological basis. You see? But we have lost sight of the real root of fear. I will repeat. God did not give us fear. If you see only fear, then you will see fear as an emotional reaction. Psychological, mental. But the real root is spirit. Yes. Now, when the Bible says God didn't give you a spirit of fear, I will make it clear for you. God did not give you a demon of fear. Because fear is not good. So if it's a spirit, it's an invisible spirit. Because spirit is invisible. So it's either light or darkness. It's either good or bad. If it's light, it's angels who celebrate God. It is the spirit of God. And if it's not, it's a demonic spirit. So I will make it plain. God did not give you a demon of fear. Amen. Then you, you really identify what is the real deal here. Today, many people are crippled by fear. Fear robs people from their future. Their greatest future. From fear robs people from the opportunities of celebration, of achievement. Today, there are destinies that are buried because of fear. Men and women who will not dare to take a step because of fear. Fear crippled them, crippled their anointing, crippled their gift, crippled everything about them. Fear is not your friend. And no matter how sweet friend, how sweet it may sound like fear. Fear is never from God. We need to draw that in the line before we go any further. No matter the kind of fear that is hunting you, per persecuting you, oppressing you, fear is no from God. Everybody say that with me. The spirit of fear is not from God. Say it with me. The spirit of fear is not from God. Imagine if you were not afraid, what would you have achieved? 
Think about all the things you are hesitating to do because you're afraid. Fear of failure. Fear of rejection. Fear of abandonment. Fear to be let down. Fear to be mocked. Fear that it won't work. Fear of success. Fear. And therefore, we compromise with fear. The root of all fears, anxiety, that's what we call anxiety disorders. All these phobias, they are all rooted in what Second Timothy said, in the spirit of fear, the demon of fear. That is the root of it. Hallelujah. When a person is consumed by the spirit of fear or by the demon of fear, that spirit begins to dictate the entire life. I didn't say the part where they are struggling with fear. The entire life. That's why fear is so dangerous. And that's why God wants us to talk about fear and take care of business. That's why I introduced this song to us today. That's where the testimony and the encouraging word came from Minister Juliet. That's where the word of the Lord came from Alex. That's where the song continued to move our heart. And at last, I want to add the word on it. Fear is Satan's faith. I will repeat that. Fear is Satan's faith. Satan has a faith, and it's called fear. So, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, that faith is, is the thing we hope for that are not there yet as though they were. So, without faith, I cannot please God. So if I have faith, I'm pleasing God. If I have fear, I am pleasing Satan. Because fear is the equivalent of faith. Faith please God, fear please Satan. So every time you are being oppressed or moved by fear, you are actually, Satan is pleased with you. Satan says, wow, this is, I love this. The same way when you walk by faith, God is pleased with you. When you walk by fear, Satan is pleased with you. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God is manifested by faith. The kingdom of Satan is manifested by fear. Hallelujah. Satan wants to rob you and I. Us all. Satan wants to rob us completely of the joy and the destiny and the purpose God has for us. And the greatest tool that he uses is fear. Intimidation. It cripples you. And it begins to control all your life. Because when you get fear in, you get a hold of your life. People are afraid to get married because of fear. People are afraid to submit to an authority because of fear. People are afraid to begin a new business because of fear. People are afraid to obey God because of fear. People are afraid to give their tithe because of fear. People are afraid to, to, end, to, to get into a new venture because of fear. They have no faith because you can have faith and fear at the same time. It doesn't work that way. One cancels the other. Fear corrupts faith. My goal at the end of this service, we're going to deal with the spirit of fear. I'm not a psychologist, so I don't go in psychology. I want to deal with the spirit of fear. That is the root of all the phobias. That is the root of all the disorders. People are afraid that they won't be healed. People are afraid that they will die. Fear is a master spirit. Now, for you to understand what I mean by master spirit, in the demonic realm, 
they are rank. All right? There's order and there is rank. So, the greatest authority will be the last to hit you. I will give you an example to explain it. In Genesis chapter 4, we saw Abel and Cain, two brothers having an issue. That's where the first murderer came from. His name was Cain. Cain and Abel. Cain is the oldest. Cain is, Abel is the youngest. God said he accepted Abel and his sacrifice, but Cain, he rejected Cain and his sacrifice. Cain began to get not happy. He was angry. Somebody say angry. Anger is a demonic spirit, but it's not a general. It works under the spirit of death. The spirit of death is a high-level spirit. So, before death comes and hits you, it will release first jealousy. So the spirit of jealousy came, and Cain feel like jealous. Who does this little boy think he is? He's my younger brother. How oh, come? God take him, and God didn't, didn't take me. He was jealous of the relationship between God and his young brother. After jealousy came anger. He became angry. So God spoke to me and said, sin is crashing at your door. You have to master it. You better shut it down now because these guys are little guys. The big guy is coming. When jealousy and anger finish to do their work, who come last? Death. Because death is a master spirit. I'm using this example for you to understand that fear is not a small guy. Fear is a master spirit. Like death is. You get me? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Anytime fear comes in your life, you can rest assured, as I told you in the beginning, it's not from God. It cannot be from God. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 to 10, you don't need to go there just for time's sake. That is the account of Adam and Eve who just sinned. When they sinned, God came in the eve to visit them. And they ran away. That's what fear does. One of the effects of fear on mankind is to make you a fugitive. You begin to run away from the presence of God. They run away from God. People are controlled by fear. They always build walls. They isolate themselves. They have a tendency to run away because they don't want to hurt anymore. They feel like they are protecting themselves not knowing the spirit of fear is dragging them in a more dangerous maze. It's a web. They sin, fear came in, they run from God. They run from the counsel of God. They run away from the presence of God. Fear will make you embrace other alternatives. Because fear makes you desperate. And when you're desperate, you do desperate things. Fear will make you compromise your values. You are so afraid not to have enough, you will prostitute yourself to have money. So you can have enough. You are so afraid that you will not have right now your solution. That you will compromise and buy into anything that looks like God. Just you want a piece of your mind. You want rest. Fear. Fear. There is no rest in fear. There is no patience in fear. There is no peace in fear. Fear is dark. It will suck all the strength out of you. And turned you into a victim and a slave. 
You will find yourself doing things. If they have told you one day you will do it, you will say, no way. I will never do something like that. But yet when fear takes on you, it controls your mind. It takes over your body. You begin to react. Even your chemicals in the body begin to react. Fear gets you sick. Fear will turn you into a wanderer. That's what happened to Cain. When the spirit of death was operating through him and he killed his brother, he became a wanderer. He ran across the whole world and no place to settle, no place to rest. When you're controlled by fear, you're always striving. Strife, panicking, no peace. And that's why you run away. You can't hear God. Fear is not your friend. Am I going to make it? Will this work out? What if this? And what if that? Maybe there's other alternative. Oh my God. I have to do something about it right now. Oh, yeah, you can help me? Okay, here I am. Whatever you want, please, I need some peace. That's what fear does. It turns you into a slave, a wanderer. And today... God wants to set us free from the spirit of fear. That's why we are speaking about it. Somebody is leaving this place free from fear. Somebody is leaving this place free from fear. Fear makes you a slave to men. A people pleasing. You can say no because you have a fear of rejection. You want to please every human being because of fear. Because you're afraid, fear multiply. Fear call fear. You are so afraid that this won't work out, you start losing sleep. So the more you are afraid, the more fear grow. Years ago, in 2006, I talked on a subject called the dragon fear. The dragon fear is a fear, it is small like, like, like a dragonfly. But the more you meditate on it and talk about it, it begins to be big. Suddenly, it becomes a dragon that has fire coming out of his mouth with wings. You grew your fear by being afraid. Fear feed on fear. That's why when you deal with fear, don't go talk to people who are fearful. They will encourage you to be more fearful. They will, they will help you stay in that place of fear. You, you are afraid this much. You need to talk to them and you become afraid this much. Because you share with one another. You feed one another with fear. Oh, you too? It happened to you? Okay, I'm not alone then. Okay, let me keep being fearful. It's normal. It's normal. Fear is not normal. Thank you, Lord Jesus. When God called Adam and said, Adam, where are you? He said, I was afraid and I hid. I was afraid and I? So I was afraid, make me hide. Do you have a tendency when things get a little bit heated up, you just lock yourself behind your doors and build your walls and run away and hide? That's fear. When somebody opposes you, when so you, you feel judged a little bit, you run away, you begin to hide. That's fear. Some people are so afraid, and I had this before. A few people sit in the living room, they can walk in. I used to have that. When I was a child, people would say I was so timid and so fearful. Few people would be sitting in the living room, and I would be afraid to walk in. Today, I'm standing in front of congregations. I will be afraid to walk in. I will wait when they get all distracted, then I walk in nicely so nobody notice me. Because I was convinced they are looking at me, they begin to look at the, how big my head is and my ears are so big and this thing is that. You understand? You are so self-consumed with yourself. Do you think the people have time? But it's here. La coche bodayanda. Fear is a strategy of Satan to separate you from the will of God. It's a demonic strategy to take you away from the will of God. Even right now as I'm speaking, some of you are feeling, yeah, 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 yeah. 
this is it. I understand now. The light will come upon you today and the darkness will flee. Whenever a person is consumed by fear, they cease to hear God. They can't hear God anymore. Because fear will make you not able to hear God. It closes your ears. I thought already by this time I will have been married with three kids. I thought already by this time I will have my own company hiring 100 people. I thought already by this time I will be running my ministry. I thought already by this time God will have remembered and give me a job. I thought already by this time I will have my immigration papers. I thought already by this time. You understand? I thought already by this time. I thought already by this time. I thought already by this time. At the end of the day, what are you going to think now? By this time you thought that now, what are you going to keep thinking? It is fear. I talked to a lady one day in Washington about fear. She came to me and said, I don't sleep. I wake up. I'm so ex- stressed out. I have fear. I cast out the devil of fear. And then, she, no, no, before I cast out, I said, you need to meditate on the word of the Lord. And she said, meditating on the word of the Lord, I can't even focus. I can't even focus to, to read the word. I, I don't know how to meditate. I said, you are an expert in meditation. Because, because for you to be so afraid is because you know how to meditate. The only difference, you are meditating. Are you hearing me, somebody? She is a doctorate in meditation. She is a guru in meditation. Everyone who struggles with fear, not let somebody teach you how to meditate. You should be the one teaching everybody else how to meditate. Because you know how to do it. At night, you think about how you won't make it tomorrow. Before you sleep, you, you think about how you won't make it tomorrow. You wake up at midnight and you meditate. Hmm, how can I? My boss will not like me tomorrow. They will fire me tomorrow. After two minutes, you think again. Hmm, my children. You are a meditator. You are an expert in meditation. It rolls over and over again in your mind. So nobody needs to teach you how to meditate. Are you hearing me? Say, I hear you. Are you hearing me? Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want you to hear the voice of God clearly. Because when you are full of fear, you won't hear the voice of the Lord. And that's what happened to Adam and Eve. They ran away. Let me go quickly here with you. I don't want we miss God's purpose because of fear. When God spoke to my wife to go to Montreal, we were excited. Yay, President. And then the reality hit me. I'm telling you, I know what fear is. You begin to be too smart. Calculation comes in. Because you gotta, you got to work yourself out of the will of God. Right? You have, you have to convince yourself out of the will of God. But you will not acknowledge because of fear. You won't say that. You will not acknowledge because of fear. But down deep within, you are scared to death. Faith will pull you toward God. Faith will pull you toward the promises of God. Fear will pull you away. You begin to doubt that God really said Will God really do this for me? Was this prophecy really from God? Was it really God was talking? You know, you begin to question. You're trying to justify the fact that you won't do it. But in reality, it's because you are afraid you fear to death. Praise the Lord, somebody. Thank you, Lord. Can we give a seat to this special guest of mine? This is my... uh, Therapist and uh, his son Jeff and Josie. Please let's give them a seat to sit. Thank you for coming to the house of the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Second Corinthians 10, 4, 6 said. Second Corinthians 10, 4, 6. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. 
Did you hear strongholds? Casting down argument. That's those debates we are having with God when we want to justify ourselves to get out of what God wants us to do. And, and it sounds really beautiful. It sounds very special. Yet it's still an argument. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, that fear. Fear is a high thing. It's a spirit of the demonic. It's a high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Did God really say it? Did God mean what he was saying? Did he really mean it? We got to bring it all to captivity. When your imagination is full of fear, imagination, you speak out of fear. You walk out of fear. You relate with people out of fear. You engage in projects out of fear because your imagination is full of fear. I won't go into this much, but your imagination is the screen God used when he gives you a vision. That's what Prophet Okema was talking about. It's on your imagination God puts a vision or a picture and so on to communicate to you. It is the imagination that is the part of the soul that connects the spirit to the body. When that is full of fear, it cripples you. Because you can't sleep anymore. You begin to meditate on what is on your imagination. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Fear is pure torment. Yes. Pure torment. Yes. Have you ever been tormented by fear? I did. I tell you the truth. Yeah. It's dangerous. Yes. That's what brings people to kill themselves. Yeah. 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 Do you know the word torment? What is related to? Demon. <laughs> I will do my best today to give you the true identity of what you call, oh, you know, I just have a fear. No, 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 no. You have a demon of fear. Torment is demonic. Yeah. The demon will torment you. Fear will torment you. Fear will make you lie when you should not lie. Fear will make you attack first instead of being patient because you rather attack before you get attacked. Fear will make you destroy relationships that were godly because of fear. Wherever fear is, sin is never far. Did you hear what I just said? 1 John 4.18 says, 1 John 4.18, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. Can be more clear than that. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. So, where there is no perfect love, Fear is always there. Why are we afraid? It's because we have not understood how God loves us. If you really know about perfect love, you will not worry about your future. If you know perfect love, you will not worry about this person will betray me again. Let me punch them first before they punch me. Because perfect love relinquish everything that pertains to you in the hands of the loving God. But when there is no perfect love, fear always come around. And we know, as human beings, we can perfectly love God all the time. That's the truth, what I just said. Because we are growing and we've been transformed from faith to faith and from glory to glory. It's called sanctification. So what then did you do in the meantime? Love is the medication for the soul. Jesus Christ loves you. And that's why it's impossible for you to fail. 
Jesus Christ loves you. That's why he died for you and I. We just read the verse in Jeremiah 33. He has good thought towards you. He has an amazing future for you and I. We need to rest assured that God is on our side. So who can be against us? I have seen fear prevent or destroy authentic relationships because of fear. Fear will prevent you from living out your dreams. I will ask you back the question. There are some books that are not written today because of fear. There are some projects that are not being undertaken because of fear. What is preventing you today to move forward? What is the fear you're struggling with that is preventing you to take the next step, to conquer more ground, to achieve exploit? What is preventing you? What is that fear? Hallelujah. I say it and I will say it again because I want your spirit to handle it. The spirit of fear is a demonic spirit from hell. It's a dark spirit. It's an evil spirit. That is the root of fear. It's demons. Can you imagine? You're all excited and pumped up. You feel like this is it. Finally, I got the project. This is the way I'm going to run this. One, two, three. In the next six months, things changing. You're excited. You share your joy with people. Are you ready for this? Watch this, all right? And then you come and talk to the wrong person and say, I am so excited. This will be a turnaround. Six months, ah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And this guy look at you like that. Hmm. Do you really think you can do this? I know this other guy, he tried, he fell. This other one. And he will pick up people who are smarter than you on purpose. People you won't compare to. They are up there. Say, this one, tried. I was watching the TV on CNN there, and then I saw this too. It doesn't work. And suddenly, bleh, you were here. And you, from here to here. Just because of one word. Fear is communicated a lot of times through words. Be careful who you share your vision with. They will kill it in the womb before it then it becomes a manifestation. Because they will release fear that will cripple you and create doubt in your mind. And suddenly you cease to believe. Where did the excitement went? Fear just sucked it out of you. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yes. I could stop here and then we pray. But even the root of depression is in fear. Yes. It's fear. Oppression, it's in fear. Discouragement, it's in fear. Loneliness, it's in fear. Abandonment, it's in fear. The fear of success is in fear. The sort of fear of failure is in fear. Everything else. The anxiety is fear. It's all rooted in fear. And it's a demonic spirit. Years ago, somebody was dealing with that spirit that I used to deal with. And I told him, you know what, you need deliverance. And they say, yeah, but I've been going to the psychologist, you know. It's been helping me. I'm telling you, you cannot counsel a demon. No, it will give you peace for a bit. No, no, talk to me. Am I saying something wrong from this pulpit now? It will give you peace for a little bit because they will give you strategy to deal with it and few pills to deal with it. And that is totally fine because every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. You go see the doctor. Don't be spiritually wacko and no no reasoning that we, we have to bury you because you don't want to go to the doctor. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm just saying there are agents in God's hand who do their part. But there are certain things, specifically the spirit of fear. You need deliverance. You don't need counseling. Because they cannot counsel a demon. It's true. (laughs) 
No, I just want to create an atmosphere of peace. Hallelujah. Peace, peace, peace. The Zen. Peace. It is good you do that. It will cool you down for a little bit. But you remain a slave of fear. That's why the song says, I am no longer a slave to fear. Because you can cope with it. But it's not coping that is the true cure. It's called deliverance. And I told you last time, don't debate with me about this deliverance stuff. Can a Christian be possessed or not? Leave that alone. I don't care if it's in you, around you, above you, behind you. As long as it's in your environment, it has to go. So leave the doctrine alone. But everything that preventing you to walk in the will of God and to fulfill God's agenda has to leave your life. It doesn't matter if it's in the head or in the nose and in your lungs. It has to go. So leave the doctrine alone. A demon is a demon. Fear will turn you into a liar. Fear makes you hide. You are afraid to disappoint people. You are afraid to hurt people. You are afraid for people to hurt you. You are afraid to reject people. You are afraid for people to reject you. It's either you who will do it to them, you are afraid of that, or them doing to you, you are afraid of that. So you are afraid going out and you are afraid coming in. Because you are afraid you will hurt people, therefore you walk on eggs. I don't want anybody. I don't want to mix anybody's business. I don't want to mix with anybody's business. Mm -mm, I had enough. I don't want to hurt people. I don't want to hurt. Mm -mm. That's fear. And then you know what? I, I better walk away because I don't want to get hurt. And therefore, I need to speak light. I'm, I just come to the church for my Jesus. I finish to worship my Lord. Let me just live quietly on the other side. They are having their fellowship. Let them have their fellowship. Me, I just come for my Lord Jesus. No, you have a spirit of fear because human beings have disappointed you so much. Now you're protecting yourself and you run away. But from today, in the name of Jesus, you are leaving this place free. I say you are living free. You know, it's my personality. I just don't like too much talk. Mm -mm. This church business stuff, mm -mm. I just come worship my Lord. Huh? And then they are doing their thing, I just leave. That's why I come late on Sunday. <laughs> so everybody's already engaged me. I, just, I like to sit in the back because I can live nicely. I, I just love the church. I love the worship. I love the word. But these people here, my own business. Let me mind my own business. Let me mind my own business. Me and Jesus alone. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and me. In your life, you are four people. Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and you. I mind my own thing. I'm not into this thing. Let me just do my own fear to be judged. Fear to be rejected. Fear to be hurt. Fear to disappoint. Fear! Of criticism. Yes. You know, it sounds so wise and so amazing. I just mind my own business. It sounds like, wow, this guy is so, this woman and this guy is so powerful, so wise. I, they mind, they are people of peace. They just mind their business, peace. No, it's not true. They are full of fear. Their imagination is full of fear. Their experiences are full of fear. Human being is not your enemy. The devil is. Mama Margit, am I speaking? Oh. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay, let's close with this one. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Philippians 4, 6, and 7, and Job 1, 10. Go first to Job 1, 10. Those are my two last scriptures. Job 1, 10. Have you not made an edge? Somebody say edge. Yes. Now, this word edge, don't forget about it, all right? You've got to keep it in your imagination. Begin to meditate on it. Edge, 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 edge. Around him, around his household. See, the, the hedge of protection is around him. 
run his household, and run all that is he has on every side. Three dimension of protection. You, your family, and everything that pertains to you. Isn't that beautiful? God put an edge of protection around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side. You have blessed the work of his hand. What am I talking to? He has blessed the work of his hand and his possession have increased in the land. When you are the edge of protection, your, the work of your hand increase, your possession increase, your work become prosperous. Amen. This is talking about Job. The devil now show up in the presence of the Lord and he said, this Job guy you're bragging about, seriously? Why will he not serve you? Why will he not do your will? Look at what you did for him. You put an edge. That word edge there is the edge of protection is faith. You put peace, peace, sorry. You put peace around him. Peace. Peace. The peace of God is a rampart. It's all protection. Whenever you begin to lose peace, fear is not far. You catch me? He said, the, the reason this guy he worship you is because you put peace around him. Peace around his family. Peace around everything that he owned. Now go back to Philippians now. Chapter 6, verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 6. Be anxious for, please say that. Everybody say it. Now turn to your neighbor and point the finger at them and say, be anxious for nothing. No, no, no. I'm, you, use your prophetic finger. Be anxious. Please tell the other neighbor, be anxious for nothing. <laughs> All the husbands were happy turning to their wife, be anxious. <laughs> anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. What are you anxious for? Tomorrow? Are you going to make it? What are you anxious for? That you will remain single all the days of your life? All the married people are saying, what do you mean? <laughs> you will remain single all the days of your life? You are anxious for that? Are you anxious that you will fail in what you are undertaking? Are you anxious that you won't make it? Are you anxious that your relationship won't go well? Are you anxious that people will judge you and criticize you and point the finger at you? What are you anxious for? That your boss will fire you? That financially you can't make it? That there are too much on your hand that you will not be able to fulfill? What are you anxious for? That time is passing, and now you have reached the 40s, and now you are 45, and now you are 50, and 55, and the thing you believe God for has not come to pass yet. Will they really come to pass? What are you anxious for? Wow. That no one will receive you? Nobody will accept you? Nobody will embrace you? What are you afraid of? What are you anxious for? That your project will not see the day? That you won't have enough resources? What are you anxious for? The Bible said, be anxious for nothing. And that word nothing in Greek and Hebrew and French and English and any language means nothing. That's what it means. Somebody say it's nothing. <laughs> be anxious for nada in Spanish. Be anxious de rien. French. Be anxious for nothing. Nothing. God said, take your list of all the things you're anxious of and make them kneel, equal zero. Nothing. Nothing. Somebody say nothing. nothing. Don't be anxious for sickness. Don't be anxious for disease. Don't be anxious for finances. Don't be anxious for the opinion of people about you. Don't be anxious about your condition. Don't be anxious for nothing. God has not forgotten you. In perfect love, there is a remembrance on you and for you. 
He remembered Rachel and opened the womb. God will remember you at the right time. He will remember you. Be anxious for nothing. Don't be anxious for your children's condition. Don't be anxious for your son. Don't be anxious for your wife. Don't be anxious for your church. Don't be anxious for anything. Nothing. Anxious for nothing. That closed the deal for all of us. He didn't say it only if. Hmm. Some cases are different. <laughs> did, did he say that? But in everything, by prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, let your request be made known. Not your fear, your request. Not your worries, your request. Not your anxiety, your request be made known to God. This preaching, you have to preach it to yourself. This verse, you need to talk to yourself. Elijah, be anxious for nothing. Hallelujah. Do be anxious for nothing. People think you're schizophrenic, but you're talking to your spirit. David said, oh, my soul, do you not know? Oh, my soul, do not fear. Do be anxious for nothing. Look at your bills packing up and look at them and say, Elijah, be anxious for nothing. Look at your condition piling up and say, hey, you, be anxious for nothing. When you begin to be anxious, the edge of protection, that is peace, begins to crumble down. It opens the door of the enemy to enter in. Hear me, people of God. Fear is not a friend. In fact, the more you talk about it, the more it grows in you. Some people have accepted their fears as their natural state, condition for life. I have a condition. It's not a condition, it's a demon. Yes. When fear comes, peace leaves. Yes. I shared this with you one day. My, my son was behaving and he was screaming. And I came with my hand like that and I said, in the name of Jesus, I command peace. Nothing was happening. Peace in the name of Jesus. Nothing was happening. I said peace in the name of Jesus. Nothing was happening. He screamed more. Peace in the name of Jesus. He reacted more. Peace, 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 peace. I said peace. The Holy Ghost stopped me. He said, stop doing this. <laughs> you are scaring him. <laughs> you are creating more anxiety in him. Stop doing this. You are scaring the boy. <laughs> and the Holy Ghost began to teach me. He said, Elijah, you can't give peace when you don't have peace. Hey! Hey! You cannot give peace when you are striving and panicking. I was telling peace people, I panic. Peace in the name of Jesus. Peace. I'm panicking. You understand? I'm stirred up. There was no peace and I'm screaming peace. <laughs> you will scream peace until you get blue. If you don't have peace here, you cannot release peace. When I got this, I spray in tongue. Rabo, so, tebo. I built myself up a little bit and I cooled down in the Lord. By the time I was about to say peace, he cooled down. <laughs> Somebody say peace, peace is the edge of protection over my life, my family, my possession, my jurisdiction. By peace, I speak. By peace, I preach. By peace, I work. By peace, I do business. By peace, I raise my family. By peace. Not by fear. Did I get your attention now? Yes. Now peacefully raise up yourself. Peacefully. Lego Baba Yadandele. I say, will peace stand up peacefully? Not striving. We won't do an altar call if not the whole church will be here. So we will all let you stand in your seat. But if you can stand up, I would really like you to stand up. If you can't, it's we understand. Right? 
It's a spirit. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God who's loved, who's cherished, who's appreciated, who is accepted. I am the beloved of the Lord. Fear has run your household. Fears have run your life. Fear has taken over your thoughts, your imagination, your mind. Fear has found residence in you for so long, so many years. It has convinced you of his friendship. You have accepted fear because you think it is a psychological feeling or reaction. You have taken it and accepted it. You have embraced fear because you have used fear to protect yourself for so many times that you think it's an asset to your life. But God says there is no edge of protection that fear can build for you. It is a demonic spirit. It is the spirit of the darkness. It's a gloomy, oppressive spirit. It is the demonic master that has been robbing you from your joy, from your strength, from your peace. That have been putting you on hold regarding your destiny, fulfilling your projects. It's your tormentor in the night time, at work, in the assembly. It has robbed you of your peace and your tranquility and of your rest. Today we sing and we expose fear. We have heard the testimonies that have exposed fear. And under the word of God that is established in this place, fear is not our friend. Fear is not our faith. Fear is demonic. And Father, today in the name of Jesus, operate something within us. I will lead you into this simple prayer. Just put your hand on your heart and repeat this word after me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for I have given room to the spirit of fear in my life, in my decision making. Forgive me. Lord Jesus, forgive me for I have yielded to fear instead of yielding to faith. I have relinquished your will and I have questioned you instead of trusting and obeying you. Forgive me. I stand here in the authority of the name of Jesus. Now we'll begin to pray for you as the Spirit leads and you'll begin to receive. I will start with fear that I've been passed to you by your parents through the generations because fear, the demon of fear can be transmitted. I want to deal with that right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand here in your name. There is power in the name of Jesus. This is the name that you have given us by which men will be delivered, men will be saved, men will be healed, 
men will be transformed, that your will will be fulfilled. I come again, every link, every curse, every malediction, every transfer from the genealogies tree coming to this one by the authority in your name, I cut that link and I lose them free in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every familiar spirit of fear. I rebuke from the life every familiar spirit of anxiety in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Fear with all your composites. I cancel your activity. I nullify your influence in the life of this one now in the name of Jesus. I release the blood of Jesus against you. I release the word of God against you. I release the testimony against you. And we declare their freedom, their liberation, and their emancipation in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. I uproot now the spirit, the root of the spirit of fear that we have cultivated because of life experiences. Like John the Baptist coming to uproot the tree by the roots. Father, in the name of Jesus, I uproot by the roots every fear, every form of phobia, anxiety, every fear of rejection, abandonment, Every fear to be hurt, every fear of a crowd to be judged, to be criticized, to be rejected, I uprooted today in the name of Jesus. I declare freedom, I declare liberty, I declare your liberation in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I break the yoke of fear over your life and I release you and I command you to go free in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Spirit of intimidation, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I give you thanks, O oh Lord. Rebuild the edge of protection around their lives. Let the peace of God that surpass, says the understanding of man, Begin to surround us. Begin to circle our mind, our imaginations, our thought life, our lives, our children's lives. Peace in the name of Jesus. With the peace I receive, I give you the peace. At the peace of Christ, I give you the peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear not, for I am with you. I will not leave you and I will not forsake you. Fear not for who's against you when I'm for you and when I'm with you. Fear not. I will uphold you, Jacob. Fear not. I will uphold you. I will defend you. I will protect you. I will secure you. I will walk with you. Fear not. Fear not. I come again, the spirit of death that have tormented your people for so long. Father, I rebuke the spirit of death. You rose from the dead and you conquered death. You conquered death in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the spirit of death. I rebuke the spirit of death. I rebuke the spirit of death in the name of Jesus. I break his yoke. I break his influence over your mind, over your life in the name of Jesus. Every hope that I've been teared down, let your hope be rebuilt. Let your hope be rebuilt. Let your hope be rebuilt. Every believing that I've been scattered, let it be rebuilt. Let your believing be rebuilt. Believe again. Believe again that by his mercy, you are healed. 
Believe again that you will not fail. You will succeed. Believe again that greater is he that is in you, that is in the world. Believe again that you are blessed in the city. Believe again that you are blessed in the field. You are blessed and highly favored and the love of God is upon you. He said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. The pleasure of God is robbing us, is over us. The pleasure of God is offering this place. The pleasure of God is upon you. Father, I declare a new day. Every enterprise that you are buried, resurrected in the name of Jesus. Every enterprise that fear has robbed you from, let it be restored and it can be more clear and enlarged in the name of Jesus. Every relationship that has been broken because of fear, may the Lord restore back to you multitude in the name of Jesus Christ. Every finance that you could have gained, that you have missed to gain because of fear, let it be restored back to you hundredfold in the name of Jesus. Every peace that you have lost and the rest that have been robbed from you, let rest and peace be gathered around you and about you today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I want you to declare with me, I can do, say it again, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Say it again, I can do. One more time. One more time. I can Let the strength of Christ be upon you that you may rise up and do all things in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout and give a prayer to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave of sin. Let him this song. When this song is going on, I want you to go and hug 40 people. 40 people today. Hallelujah. I want you to raise your voice and declare, I am no longer a slave.